Hello, white people. I have some videos here. I can't really tell. Is this more deception? Is this a distraction? Or are we getting lucky? Are the lies being unraveled? I never trust a large, well-funded corporation for the truth. A Minnesota state senator says officials are asking doctors to fill out death certificates with diagnosis of COVID-19, whether the person died of it or not. Valley News Team's Callie Hubbard talked to the lawmaker today, who says fear may be coming into play. Minnesota Senator and Dr. Scott Jensen says he received a seven-page document from the Minnesota Department of Health on how doctors should go about filling out a cause of death certificate. The letter from the Minnesota Department of Health gives advice to physicians, physician assistants, and others who certify deaths. The doctor says the letter takes you to a CDC website that has recommendations on how to include COVID-19 as a diagnosis for someone who was never tested for Nineteen. Yeah, I have a nursing home patient who's frail and 88 years old and comes down with a cough and, and a fever and after three days ends up um, passing away from pneumonia. I'm not going to put influenza on that death certificate. So I doubt that I would be inclined to put Dr. Jensen says each state's reported death numbers are making a lot of people fearful, adding that getting the number right is critical, especially during a pandemic. I worry that sometimes we're so darn interested in just jazzing up the fear factor that sometimes people's ability to think for themselves is paralyzed if they're frightened enough. One of the scenarios listed under the CDC guidance for certifying deaths due to Virus says, although no testing was done, the coroner determined that the likely underlying cause of death was COVID-19, given the patient's symptoms and exposure to an infected individual. So is the Minnesota state data reliable? I don't think I have any position to question that per se. I know that I have talked with nursing staff who have been involved with people who have passed away that had either living wills or were on hospice care. In some of those situations, uh, I've been led to believe that there may have been a COVID-19 diagnosis included on the death certificate document without having had COVID-19 confirmed laboratory test but i don't have any way to confirm that myself he says the public isn't stupid and if you start messing with numbers you're going to wish you didn't in the fm area cali hubbard valley news i think it's critically important can you repeat what you just said please well last friday i received a seven page document that sort of told me that if i had an 86 year old patient that had pneumonia but was never tested for covid 19 but sometime after she came down with pneumonia, we learned that she had been exposed to her son who had no symptoms, but later on was identified 19, that it would be appropriate to diagnose on the death certificate 19. Now, we've not done that. If someone has the pneumonia after, and, and it's in the middle of a flu epidemic, and I don't have a test on influenza, I don't diagnose influenza on the death certificate. I will say... Uh, this elderly patient Sir, died of pneumonia. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I, my heart is sinking right now as you're telling me this. You're, you're a doctor. Why in the world would they be sending you out information to fill out death certificates, whether the person's been diagnosed with COVID-19 or not, but then to say in the death certificate this person's death was caused by COVID-19? That, that does not sound right to me. I went to the person in our office who does most of the death certificates over the last you know, 10, 20 years, and I said, does this sound right? I had her look at the documents that I printed it off, and she said, well, we've always been told that you always put down just facts. You don't put down any probabilities. You don't put any presumptions down. It's just what you know. And so this is concerning, and, and it actually gets to your point, Chris. When we start talking about the data that goes into the modeling, we have to ask ourselves a question. Are we being forthright? Are we sharing with the public? Minnesota, North Dakota, we don't need to be having it sugar-coated. We want to know but, what's going into your modeling. So with that being said, why would they want to skew the number of deaths due to COVID-19? Well, fear is a great way to control people. I worry about that. I worry that sometimes we're so darn interested in just jazzing up the fear factor. 
My next guest is a doctor and state senator in Minnesota who is deeply troubled by the CDC's latest guidance for counting deaths. Dr. Scott Jensen joins me now. Uh, doctor, I want to read for our viewers what the CDC says in part about how to count deaths r relating to that last issue we just raised. In cases where a definite diagnosis of cannot be made, but is suspected or likely, like the circumstances are compelling with a reasonable degree of certainty, it is acceptable to report COVID-19 on a death certificate as probable or presumed. So, doctor, what's the problem with that? Well, in short, it's ridiculous. I spent some time earlier today just going through the CDC's manual on how to complete death certificates and part, the parts that were specifically written for physicians. And in that manual, it talks of precision and specificity, and that's what we were trained with. The determination of the cause of death is a big deal. It has impact on estate planning. It has impact on future generations. And the idea that we're going to allow people to massage and sort of game the numbers is a real issue because we're going to undermine the trust. And right now, as we see politicians doing things that aren't necessarily motivated on fact and science, the public's going to, their trust in politicians is already wearing thin. And doctor, in that same CDC guidance sheet on COVID-19, it references the fact that basically this is a judgment call for doctors on how to fit, you know, I read it, how to, what goes on line one, and then what goes on line two, and what goes on the final line as far as contributory, uh, contributing factors and, and ultimate cause of death. But they concede that it is a judgment call. It, again, why is that not correct? Well, let's just take influenza. If I have a patient died uh, a month ago, had fever, cough, and a diet after three days, and maybe had been an elderly, fragile individual, and there happened to be an influenza epidemic around our community, I wouldn't put influenza on the death certificate, and I've never been encouraged to do so. I would put probably uh, respiratory arrest would be the top line, and the underlying cause of disease would be pneumonia, and in the contributing factors, I might well put emphysema or congestive heart failure, but I would never put influenza down as, as the underlying cause of death, and yet that's what we're being asked to do here. Dr. Fauci was asked about the death count today. Here's what he said in part. What do you say to those folks who are, who are making the claim without really any evidence that these deaths are being padded, that the number of 19 deaths are being padded? You will always have conspiracy theories when you have uh, very challenging public health crises. They are nothing but distractions. Conspiracy theories, doctor? So you're engaging in conspiracy theories. What do you say to Dr. Fauci tonight? Well, I would remind him that anytime healthcare intersects with dollars, it gets awkward. Right now, Medicare has determined that if you have COVID-19 admission to the hospital, you'll get paid $13,000. If the COVID-19 patient goes on a ventilator, you get $39,000, three times as much. Nobody can tell me after 35 years in the world of medicine that sometimes those kinds of things impact on what we do. Some physicians really have a bent towards public health and they will put down influenza or whatever because that's their preference. I try to stay very specific, very precise. If I know I've got pneumonia, that's what's going on, the, the death certificate. I'm not going to add stuff just because it's convenient. I think that it's not and a it's conspiracy interesting. theory at all. Uh, so you you, reje you reject what he said? Absolutely. Well, it's interesting that in Italy, where it's socialized medicine, I guess they don't have an interest in the, the money, uh, if that's what it is here. And they just went back and they started reclassifying deaths, according to their, their top scientific advisor. So they admitted that they were being liberal or generous in how they coded some of these deaths. And, and they're just going back and reclassifying them. Does that surprise you? It really does. I mean, let's just take someone getting hit by a bus and they, they collapse along and they go into the emergency room and they're there for 15, 20 minutes. Blood work comes back. COVID test comes back positive and they die 20 minutes later because of their collapsed lung. We're going to put that down. 19. That doesn't make any sense. Dr. Jensen, really important conversation. We really, really appreciate your data driven perspective. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate your data-driven perspective, right?
The PSYOP continues, it's just taken a different direction. Look carefully at these people. Can you guys tell that these are all actors? And then on top of these lies, we have people saying that maybe this illness is caused by F-I-V-E-G, which it probably isn't. It's hard to say. I can't tell you if it is or not. I look to see what sort of illnesses F-I-V-E-G causes, and it's a very, very long list. The elite's mistake is that they leave up the system to brainwash us, and they forget that it's also a system where we can communicate with each other. All right, white people, that's the damage for today. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your comments below.